Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody uh, enjoyed uh, the Super Bowl. Hopefully your team that you were pulling for won. And now football is over. Let us all pray. Again, it's a dark time until preseason again. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, most important uh, developments going into today's session. How were the equity markets, especially the NASDAQ uh, composite, were going to uh, react to last week being the first week that we took a, a step back, right? I think that was the most important part. Uh, two and a half percent breather on the NASDAQ last week, uh, which wasn't a big deal considering, again, uh, the NASDAQ was up as much as 17 uh, percent at one point last week. And the question is, well, what was going to happen uh, ahead of the CPI? Tomorrow, obviously, is the biggest uh, the biggest reading of the week tomorrow is the, uh, the February CPI. The consensus is around 6.2 uh, or so, right? 6.2. Um, the question is, you know, how is the market going to react? Uh, I think based on what we saw today's action, there's two uh, thoughts of, of reason. Number one, a nice little bump up today. Uh, very, very choppy uh, in the first couple of hours. Um, I came in today, if you watched the video uh, last night, um, I came in today. I was, you know, I was looking for all my and all my data uh, was telling me we were going to get another day of a potential back test. So I was looking for another sell off that obviously never came today, uh, but no harm, no foul, nothing confirmed. But the point is, and everything just started dripping. Like literally, it was like a slow drip, but to the upside. And you know, for every stock that was, you know, very strong today, and you can make an argument, Microsoft uh, definitely led the way. Continues. Uh, its wave on the AR charge, but you had uh, Apple, you know, you had Apple wake up today very, very strongly. Uh, you had Meta today very, very strong. Again, it's not going to, it's not going to really show or demonstrate, but what Meta is doing right now, it's, it's, you know, one day away from confirming the five day moving average, even Netflix that they came out with some, you know, they came out with some pretty aggressive uh, put buying right off the word go uh, right at the open it it deflected it very very you know very very clean and now it's a day away from reclaiming the 10-day moving average and going into tomorrow's session luckily uh, we don't have to wait till like two o'clock 2:30 uh, the same as the Fed uh, CPI comes out tomorrow uh, at 8:30 the problem with uh, the CPI coming out at 8:30 is it's very very tough based on the last you know six seven uh, CPIs that came out, it's very, very tough to get a game plan from one side of the market, right? Um, you know, we've been seeing 3% moves, 4% moves, 2% uh, moves, 3% candles, 4% uh, candles in, in either direction. So, you know, to go in and make yourself an actionable trading plan for tomorrow with only one side of the market is going to be a very, very big problem. Because again, you could take a look at the market and go, oh, Q's, Q's look great, right? Look what they did today. Q's, you know, had a pullback of two and a half percent. They rebounded today. They reclaimed uh, the five and the 10 day moving average, super bullish, right? Market should go higher. Well, again, that's the whole point of the CPI coming out. We don't know what's gonna happen because the whole argument is, well, today's little, uh, you know, little one, one and a half percent melt up uh, on the NASDAQ 100 is kind of, priced into into tomorrow's move i mean how we possibly even even pretend to even know that or pretending to guess we don't know and the point is if i'm turning around and, and saying to myself well i think you know i think the cues look great above today's price action yeah that's great but if the cpi comes out and the data is well received we're not having the conversation down here we're having the, having the conversation up here or up here or even down here below the previous range so it's very very tough and I think a lot of you guys are going to uh, are going to realize this unless we get a very muted reaction. The biggest problem going into tomorrow's session, once the CPI is released, you know, you're going to have a pretty big move, right? Pretty big move in either direction, which is going to negate a lot of channels very, very quickly. And unless you're one of these, you know, um, you know, shoot first, ask questions later, and don't and don't let the market to kind of simmer a little bit, don't let the noise digest. 
or digest the information, you might get caught. Maybe, maybe get lucky off the first move uh, of the CPI, but there's a good chance if, if you are unlucky, and unfortunately, uh, luck does play a part of it, but if you're unlucky and not patient to let that first move to kind of, you know, it's kind of similar to kind of play out a little bit, you could have a very, very aggressive uh, start to the day. And that's our biggest issue tomorrow. If the market uh, perceives this number as good, you might be buying stocks well above the pre the, today's range well above the previous day's range that's called you know you're putting in your position to chase right and the same thing to the downside uh so i tried to do my best today uh well at least this evening to kind of give us an opportunity to kind of trade both sides of the market so for example and again you, you want to when, when you're talking about stocks trading both sides of the market you want to use you know stocks with the biggest average true range what's, what's the biggest two average true range stocks especially in 2023 well the first one is nvidia Right, look at the video. The video had this massive run. If you look at the range today, it had an upside of 220, right? 220 and change. You had a downside of 209. So you're talking about what 11, 12 points of average to range. So you can see here, here's a definitive stock that has a perfect scenario, right? An absolute perfect scenario for the top of the range preparation and the bottom of the range preparation. Something's gonna give here, right? So I, I tried to make a watch list tonight. Uh, you know, of, of names that I think that despite a potential big move in who knows which direction, that we give us ourselves a fighting chance technically that we don't have to chase, right? That's the whole point, that we don't have to chase. We don't have to anticipate uh, the potential next move because there is so much violent a average true range. So even if, if NVIDIA gaps up above the previous due, two days range, look how much room you still have to go, right? You still have room from the, <clears throat> from the bottom channel here of February the 9th uh, to all the way the highs of 230. So there's a lot of room here. And the same thing to the downside. As you can see here, it held the bottom of the range here back to back days. So if the number is perceived bad, you still have what, 10 points, right? You have about eight to 10 points of downward bias as well. Same name, for example, like a Tesla, right? You know, Tesla has been on a phenomenal run in the last couple of days. Um, some pretty aggressive, um, you know, some pretty ag aggressive pullback. You know, again, we pulled back from uh, 214 all the way down to 187 in three days. That's not a small thing. Again, the contra argument is, well, that's not really anything considering the stock since January the 6th has gone absolutely berserk and has gone from 101 to uh, 214. Touche, right? Touche. So the key is for Tesla, for example, you have to use the previous day's range, right? So not even today's range. You got to use the previous range and obviously today's lows because again, one of those channels will confirm when the price action starts to expand. The problem is if you're not trading beta, right? If you're not trading beta, you're not going to have uh, you're not going to have um, the same type of scenario that for example myself is going to have because again i trade beta stocks i trade the stocks with the biggest average to range so for example if you're trading a smaller name right a smaller name like like a fsly right i'll give you an example like fsly had a really really big move today huge you know huge expansion right absolutely huge expansion had a beautiful day and stopped at the top of the ch channel here so if, if the if this starts confirming well at least you wanted to confirm today's channel you're not going to get the same type of average true range that you got today it's right what's one of those scenarios that's an outlier of what the stock normally does so you're going to be you know in a weird way you're going to be bidding up a stock above today's range not knowing what the true average true range of this stock truly is and maybe paying 50 cents, 60 cents higher above today's range could be a very, very big problem versus paying a couple of dollars above NVIDIA's previous day's range could still give you eight to $10, depending how aggressive the market is. So tomorrow, you know, is gonna be a little bit of a tricky day, right? A very, very tricky day. Um, I think, you know, I think a lot of traders uh, already have it in their mind that today's session is kind of a sneak preview that people had uh, maybe the number uh, somebody got the number, leaked the number uh, ahead of them. It's possible, right? Everything's possible ahead of time. But the most important part is even if you have, right, even if you have the CPI numbers right in front of you, we never, absolutely never know uh, when the market or how the market is going to react. So the only thing we can do is, and this is my, you know, this is my advice, especially for all you guys uh, who trade, uh, who trade technology names, 
take the stocks that you do trade, right? Uh, see where the previous see where the previous um, channel is to the upside, right? Like we talked about right now on the video, and see where the previous downside channel is, and make your you know make your feasibility study, right? Based on where the stock is going to, to trade and confirm, not today's range, but the previous day's range. I think that's the only high probability that we have. And ironically, it's one of those scenarios that you can't play the first dip. You can't play the first first rejection because you don't know. You really don't know if it's a truly a truly trend day. You're only guessing. You're only anticipating. So anytime you have days that are Fed driven, Fed notes, Powell uh, testimony, or uh, CPI or PPI, remember those days are the most absolutely aggressive, right? Absolutely aggressive days. Those are the ones that are going to force you, especially if you're a newer trader, it's going to force you to put yourself in a position that you're uncomfortable, that you're, you're trying, to, to, uh, to, you're trying to, to chase the price action that might not be there because again, in your mind, you don't want to miss it, right? The whole fear of missing out. So be careful tomorrow, right? I, in, in, in a weird way, I'm almost hoping for, if, if you believe this close is good, and I do, right? I, I do believe this close is good. I think the fact that we close above the 10 and the five day moving average in the queues, at least it's giving us a glimpse. If, if nothing was on the docket tomorrow, then this would be a, a really you know positive close. But I think the best thing the market can do is actually have the first reaction to be negative. Because if you guys do remember, the, the last couple of times that we had negative initial reaction, whether it was the CPI or whether it was Powell's testimony. Remember that the Powell's testimony uh, two Wednesdays ago after the Fed minutes, right? The initial move was down and then it was up and then it was down. And then the third time, right, through the previous range, that's when it confirmed we had a really violent move uh, towards the end of the day. Because I, I think it'll be at least a lot safer than you know buying, for example, up Microsoft up 11, knowing that the previous range is only $2 away. So we wanna stay safe. Remember guys, don't ever, Put yourself in a situation that you're sensationalizing a trading day. Again, if you watched my, my video uh, two Wednesdays ago ahead of uh, the you know ahead of the Fed, right ahead of the Fed announcement, I said the same thing. I think a lot of new traders are always putting you know putting themselves or putting the next trading day that's supposed to be kind of a big deal, a big event way up here, right? They're sensationalizing the day and right away they go into the next trading day with these incredible, incredible visions of what they think is gonna happen or potentially is gonna happen. And unfortunately, because of the violent nature of that event, yeah, it might, you might be right, but the problem is you might get faked out 68 times before that. So you try to, you know, you wanna stay with days that are controllable, that are lethargic, that are predictable based on the previous night's close where you're going into an event, again, and this is the unfortunate part, a lot of new traders are already hyping this day up tomorrow in their heads. They think there's gonna be a 900 point rallies. The other side of the trade thing's gonna be a 900 point sell-off. You got the AI, remember that the AI predictor that the market's gonna crash the next day? Well, we'll see about that as well. Um, but the point is, again, don't sensationalize the trading day. There's gonna be thousands and thousands of trades ahead of you, uh, thousands and thousands of hopefully days ahead of you. This is just one normal one. So going into tomorrow's session, just take a deep breath, right? You don't need to catch every single trade. You don't have to be in every single move. You don't have to be in every single interview. You don't have to be in every single channel. If you don't wanna trade, don't trade. Again, always think longevity, guys. Think of the long game. Will I be on alert for both sides of the channels? Absolutely, I'm watching the video. I'm watching Tesla. I'm watching AMD, right? These stocks look great. I'm watching Meta, right? In case the number is good and the initial reaction uh, is going to be bad. Like, again, I'm watching these things at, off of today's range, but we have to have a contingency plan. In case they gap up aggressively or gap down aggressively, we wanna use the previous day's range, right? The previous day's range as an area that if the market does go in that direction, that we are prepared. So Meta I like, NVIDIA I like, Tesla I like, and in case the market starts pooping out as well, look at Google, right? Google really didn't rally today. It's hanging on to that 50-day moving average like it's grim death, man. So we have to be prepared. Again, we have to be prepared every single day, but now we have a little bit more of extraordinary circumstances. And again, if you're a brand new trader, again, do not trade pre-market. You'll get chopped up. Do not trade anticipation. You'll get chopped up. Do not trade if you feel your heart 
uh, palpitating out of control, uh, even though it, there's really nothing that of a big deal that is happening is. So if you have all these things and you're hyping up the day, you're probably going to find yourself in a very, very dark place tomorrow and not just financially, very mentally. And unfortunately, a lot of new traders, they just can't get over that hurdle. So running into violence is definitely not going to help. Uh, unfortunately, today, I just kind of sat out the day. There was a couple of pivots. I was, you know, I was sitting there watching uh, the downside that never confirmed on uh, Nvidia. There was a nice little pivot there. Uh, Meta was a nice little pivot there. Other than that, it was you know pretty quiet, slow melt up day. Uh, we missed uh, a bounce in Microsoft that was very, very strong. At least I missed it. Uh, so kind of a, as the kids say, a nothing burger for me. But again, it's okay, right? I, again, I, I would rather you know miss a trading session, you know, than. Uh, you know, then do something silly that I know is out of my control, out of my comfort zone and find myself, you know, slicing my wrist instead of being prepared for a potentially valuable uh, day ahead. So that's it, guys. So, so everybody, I wish you guys lots of luck tomorrow. Again, stay calm. Take a deep breath. It's really not that serious. Just one trade, uh, one day out of many. And it's just business as usual. Guys, God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.